Welcome back to The Check-In. My name is Jarrett, and I am back with Colby, and we are here again to talk about solo miners. We recently put out an episode on solo mining. I'm going to go ahead and put that link up above. Please go ahead and check that out. And once we put that up, and this is a question that I think Colby probably also gets, but the question I get around solo mining is, hey, how much energy is that using? And so originally, we were going to talk about different household appliances, but the soul miner needs to be plugged in all the time. And so to have more of an apples to apples comparison, we're just going to focus in on a refrigerator. Most people listening to this probably have a refrigerator that's always plugged in, just like you're always going to want your soul miner plugged in. So Colby, can you talk to us around the math of the refrigerator that we found, I think on Costco? So we found a energy star rated fridge that they claim only uses about 640 kilowatt hours per year. That seems awfully low to me, but we'll just take them at their word. And that basically works out to this refrigerator running at about 73 watts constantly, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Most people aren't gonna unplug their fridge to save money because then whatever they have inside goes bad. And so it's interesting to compare that household appliance, which runs all the time, compared to a mini miner, which you probably also want to keep online all the time hashing. Yeah. So let's talk apples to apples. They're saying 640 a year at kilowatts per year. On the first installment of us talking about solo mini mining, so people can you know do this at home. We talked about your brain's BMM, I think 100 minor. Can you talk to us how much that's going to use annually compared to that 640 for this fridge? Yeah, for sure. So it's pretty simple math. The uh, brain's mini minor is putting out about one terahash. You can overclock it and it puts out a little bit more than one terahash. But this thing's drawing about 40 watts and the efficiency is about 40 joules per terahash. So if you take those watts, there's about 730 hours in the average month. And so you multiply 40 times 730, that gives you about 29 kilowatt hours. And you multiply that out by 12 for an annual number. And that gives you about 350 kilowatt hours. So it's running at just above half as that super duper efficient fridge. And that is a good comparison. That is pretty solid apples to apples. And how much is that? If we had, if you're getting, you might have to do some math here on the fly. Sorry to put you on the spot. If you're getting very high power, for example, I'm up in Massachusetts right now. My power is like 23 or 22 and a half kilowatt cents per kilowatt, which is really high. If you're a Bitcoin miner down in Texas or honestly anywhere, your PPA is driving much lower power than that. Maybe even a tenth of that, if not around a ninth of that. So for you, how much is your bill extra every month because you keep your brain's miner running? Can you do that math? You said your rate is how much? 22 and a half cents a kilowatt. 22 and a half. So let's just call it 23. And if you're running this refrigerator at 640, then that means that your total annual cost to have that refrigerator operating is about $147. If you take that same 23 cents and you multiply that by the kilowatt hours of the Brains Mini Miner, Trying to remember how many hours we said that was. I'll go ahead and calculate it again. You said 350. Well, you said 350 kilowatts per year for the brain. That's right. Rate. Yeah, that's right. So 350 times that same rate of 23 cents would be an annual cost of about $81 at that very high power rate. That's a very high power rate. So then 81 divided by 12, where are we landing for a monthly addition to your power? $6.70, just under seven bucks. Okay, so that's not bad. So if you, so this is why you could probably start to run a couple of those before maybe you and your wife have a longer conversation around budgeting energy for your hobbies. Yeah, I mean, if you're, if you're, if you're stressing about a mini miner and mind you, there are mini miners that consume half that the, uh, bit 
Gamma, which uses the most efficient S21 Pro chips, uh, is using about 15 to 20 watts, so less than half of the power consumption. But if you're stressing about a $5 a month cost, you probably have bigger fish to fry and other problems to address. I would say that that's accurate. So anyway, <laughs> not getting to people's personal finances, but it's good to know that for me with running your brains, mini miner up here in Massachusetts, I would be looking at around a six to $7 extra on my bill per month, which hopefully isn't going to, you know, break the bank. And honestly to have $7 all in on a maintenance essentially, or, you know, your, your OPEX, your operating costs to be able to add hash to the network. It's really not bad. I think in five to 10 years, if someone comes across this YouTube or this podcast, they're going to be like, wow, that is nothing to run a mini miner. So, uh, Colby, thank you for hopping on. If you're listening to this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe. Listen to this on podcast platform. Please go ahead and subscribe. Make sure to check out the first video in this edition talking about solo miners that Colby and I put together and be on the lookout for future videos around solo miners. Follow us on social media on LinkedIn, X, and YouTube at Compass Mining. And Colby, thanks once again for hopping on the check-in. Thanks, guys.